Welcome to the official library Libcast, a monthly podcast exploring the many things that you can do to plug into the library. And now, he's the host for this month's show. Hello everyone, this is Carlos Saloco, and welcome to this edition of Libcast. In this episode, we'll be focusing on the Sundance Film Festival. If you're a connoisseur of films like me, then January must be the best month of the year. That's because some of the best films from here and around the world are shown at the festival. Now for everyone out there who's never heard of the Sundance Film Festival, let's just say that it's the largest independent cinema film festival in the United States. Not only does it include dramatic films, but it also includes documentaries, short features and animations. So there's something for everyone to see. Now the library has a varied selection of past winners. Let's look at some. If you're into documentaries, we have the 2005 Grand Jury Prize winner, Why We Fight, a documentary that examines the United States war making policies. We also have the 2004 Audience Award winner, Born into Brothels. This documentary examines the life of children who grew up in Calcutta's Red Light District. If you like dramatic films, we have the 2002 Grand Jury Prize winner, Personal Velocity. This film talks about three women whose lives have reached a turning point. We also have the 2004 Audience Award Prize winner, Maria Full of Grace. This is a story of a young woman whose life has changed forever when she becomes a drug mule to transport drugs from Colombia to the United States. For other notable Sundance films in our collection, look for the display located near the third floor exit gates. The display will be running from the 17th through to the 27th of January. If you want to see the many other Sundance Film Festival titles we have in our collection, simply go to our website and type in Sundance Film Festival when doing a catalogue search, or stop by the reference desk and ask for assistance. Staying with the Sundance theme, we recently sat down with Eva Rinaldi, Associate Director of Operations for Labs and Community Programs at the Sundance Institute and asked her a few questions. Eva, why would a student want to come up to the festival? The festival is the premier film festival in the United States, independent-wise. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for some people, uh, once in a year, definitely, to experience films that you may never get to see uh, on the big screen again, as well as uh, potentially find a film that ends up being a blockbuster film, like March the Penguins came to the festival as The Emperor's Journey in French, and I got to see it in, in the French version, so I was excited, and I ne- actually never saw the March the Penguins version, but those kinds of things are very interesting, as well as films like Blair Witch Project, was a very underground kind of film that came to the festival, and look where it went. So it's that diversity uh, that makes it really interesting and exciting for students to just experience film. What is the Utah Student Pass? The Utah Student Pass was a pilot program that we offered this year to provide students with a, a fairly, what we considered, uh, inexpensive way to get to the festival and experience the films. The idea behind it was to allow them unlimited access to waitlist tickets. So what they'll do is use their pass, they go two hours ahead of time before a film, and get a number. Then they can leave and come back 30 minutes prior. So let's say they're number one, they'll get back in line at number one. And if there are seats available, which for the most part in most films, you're gonna have at least a few sign up or a few uh, waitlist people come in. And then they just get in the door and it's all part of their pass. And so after the first 10 films they see through the waitlist line, in essence, every other film becomes free. Are the movies only shown in Park City? There are three other cities that you can attend. There's Sundance Resort, which is our sister organization that has screenings every day. Ogden uh, has screenings in the evening and on the weekends, full day. And then our uh, second largest contingent of theaters is in Salt Lake City. We have five screenings at the Broadway, there's three, the Rose Wagner, and Tower. It is a great way. I encourage local people to go to Salt Lake because you're going to avoid the hustle and bustle of Park City. You'll be able to find parking, and definitely you should be able to get in a lot of waitlist screenings there, as well as potentially going to the main box office in Salt Lake and seeing what tickets are available day of show. You can arrive at the main box office at 8 a.m. to see if any tickets have been opened, which does happen, and they can purchase tickets through the main box office that way. Also this year, we are working with the Beehive Tea Room, which is our Salt Lake City Festival Cafe. It's going to be our second year there. So we're going to have free music from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every single night, uh, starting that fr- the first Friday to the last Saturday. So people can come and hang out in between the screenings. It's right in between Rose Wagner and Broadway. If I was new to the festival, how would I go about finding a movie that I'd enjoy seeing? If you're unsure of what films are, are 
are for you would be to look at our film guide, which is online, as well as we have printed brochures in our main box offices, and look through the descriptions. If, you, if you've never been, check out a documentary, which would be my first suggestion, um, because it's something that's happening in real life, or has happened, and it's maybe a great launch into the festival experience. If I can't make it to the festival, is there any other way that I can participate? Another way to experience the festival is our shorts online. We'll be launching a shorts film each day on our website during the festival. Then after that, they're all going to be available on iTunes for purchase. If you could say one thing to everyone listening out there, what would it be? I would say come and experience it. It's such a unique opportunity. I mean, I've been a local on the other side of things. It's always been the most exciting time of year for me because you're getting people from around the world. You're going to need to meet people from around the world, from the industry, for those people who are into film. It's just a phenomenal experience. And again, like it's in our backyard. We, we should be experiencing it. Thanks very much, Eva. And that brings an end to another episode of Libcast. On behalf of the Libcast team, this is Carlos Alarco. See you next time. Libcast is a production of the Utah Valley State Library. For more information about the library, visit our website at www.uvsc.edu library.